What I want to talk about today is tinking, T-I-N-K, which is actually knit backwards. So the, we've all had to do it. We've all had to tink back, you know, either just a handful of stitches or even hundreds of stitches. If you notice a mistake in a lace section and you, you're you not going to just tear it out, you have to go back one by one by one stitch to find your mistake. We've all been there. And then there's also times when maybe your needle comes off or you drop your knitting or God forbid a toddler or a pet gets a hold of it and it's a mess and the needles come out and you don't know how to find out what row you're on or where you're at. So I wanna show you how to kind of try to read your knitting, read your knitting so to speak, so that you can tell where you are when you pick up that disaster or you need to tink back and you can see, I just want you to see how to determine what stitches you're taking out one by one by one. All right, let's get started. All right, I've knitted this um, sample of lace just for the purpose of illustrating um, what would we do if we noticed a mistake, you know, back here somewhere and we didn't want to just remove the needles, but in, fa in fact we want to tink back or knit, tink is knit backwards. We want to tink back um, stitch by stitch, just removing them one by one in order to get back to where the mistake was. So right now we know these are just knit stitches, so I just go in underneath and let that loop slip off. So tinking back knitting stitches is not very hard, and or purl stitches is pretty straightforward. And you you know you just go in underneath the previous rows loop, and then let that slide right off. Yarn overs are easy enough to take out because we just unwrap them. But what if it's more complicated? Like for example, this this was a knit two together, and I know that because it's leaning to the right. But so I would need to go in in the middle of both of those loops that I had knitted together before. So I'm making sure that I get them both without splitting a stitch. Then we unwrap that yarn over. And we're gonna, so you need to, if it's leaning to the right, you know it's a, it was a knit two together when you knitted it originally. So now this one, this is taking out, this is a little more complicated. This is taking out a central double decrease. And we know when we knitted that, we slipped two stitches together as if to knit, and then we knitted the next one and slid those over. So there's three stitches here that we're gonna need to get a hold of. I'm gonna choose to go in from the back for these. I'm just gonna push my needle in through all three of them. And when I take this off, if I'm the least bit unsure that I've really secured all three, I'm gonna pinch it pretty securely right here as I take that needle out and pull those loops off. Okay, now I've got all three on there, but they're not facing the right way, they're twisted. So what I do in this case, I know that I slip these first two together as if to knit when I originally did the decrease. So I'm gonna take them off together and I need to sort that out. But first I'm gonna untwist this one. So you know from the correct stitch orientation that the forward leg needs to be in the front rather than in the back. So when you open it up, the leg that's to the front needs to be to the right, rather than having the stitch opening this way, where the, where the forward leg, or the leg closest to the right, is in the back. So we just wanna untwist these in the same way that we had them on the needle before, so everything's straightened back out, okay? So that's how you would take apart a central double decrease, and I'll show you that again when we get to the next one. Now this was a slip slip knit or a decrease that faces to the left. And I know that when I slip slip knit, when I slip them as if to knit, that twists the stitch and changes the orientation of it. So I need to go in from the back on these and then take out my knitting, go ahead and unwrap that yarn over. And then I need to put them back on the left needle correctly. Okay, so now everything's back the way it was. I go in from the back into those loops, okay? I just go ahead and take out the next yarn over so it's not in my way. And then reposition these stitches so that they're on back onto the needle correctly. And you might argue, well, I'm gonna knit those again anyway so I don't care if they're already twisted, but what if you've messed up your stitch count and they're not going to be twisted when you come back and correct everything? They might end up being, you know, 
knit two togethers or a or part of your central double decrease or you know if you're off in your pattern go ahead and reorient everything the way that it should be okay so that is just a regular knit stitch you can tell there's only one loop there that's a regular knit stitch and then I have another yarn over that I'll unwrap and then I'm back then I can tell that that leans to the right so that must have been a knit two together and I can tell there's two loops there and that it's leaning to the right. So I just go in from the front and get those off, okay? All right, let's get back to another double decrease here. I'll show you that one more time. So I remember I know that I slipped two of those together and then I knitted the stitch after that so that I have three loops here. So go in from the back you go in from the back if you know you intentionally twisted the stitches as part of your decrease. So go in from the back and hopefully we have all three loops, but I'm gonna pinch this pretty securely to make sure I don't accidentally drop one. Then I'm gonna go in this way and kind of put everything back, sort everything back out, making sure not to drop anything, okay? All right, there we go. Whoops, see, now I've almost dropped that one, but I have it secure. I'm pushing that against my index finger so I don't actually lose it. There we go. All right, now you can see I have all three there and everything is secure. So this was a slip slip knit, so I'm gonna go in from the back, get those back off, go ahead and unwrap that yarn over, and I'm gonna turn these back around the right way. And I have one more to do until I have tinked back that whole, the row of my sample. Now, if you have, you know, many, many dozens of stitches to do, sometimes this isn't worth it. Sometimes it is just, you know, worth it to tear back to your lifeline. But I've been known to take back a couple hundred stitches if necessary, just so that I can see exactly where I was. And I want to know if there's been a mistake. Now, the other thing that you can do is you can look at this pattern and, and see if you can look at it and notice the which of the sequence are correct and which ones are not based on where the yarn overs are or where the holes are and where the regular knit stitches are. So I can tell, you know, on the wrong side row, I just purled across, but I can tell when I made my yarn overs on the right side row, on the right side, pardon me, I can tell that like that's probably a mistake right there. There probably shouldn't be a hole right there. Um, but I can tell that, you know, this was a knit two together, this was a yarn over, that's a knit two together and a yarn over. And then I had three regular knit stitches. So if you can kind of learn to read your knitting and see, recognize what you're looking at, that will certainly be helpful. Now clearly I have a mistake here. So I'll need, I can either tink back or I can rip out to, to deal with that. All right, let's say disaster strikes and someone has gotten a hold of your knitting, whether it's a pet or a toddler, or you simply dropped it and, you know, something like this happens. And let's say you don't know where you are. Well, if you don't, if you didn't mark your pattern or your row counter, maybe you don't believe your row counter is correct. But the first order of business here is to just simply get all of these stitches back on the needle, regardless of the stitch orientation. Whether you think they're facing the right way or not, just get them all back on there, just so that you don't lose the correct number of stitches. So whether they're facing this way or this way or whichever, just get them on back on there and we'll worry about which way they're facing later. Now here, this is this was probably a yarn over, so I'm just gonna do the best I can to grab grab that up. I think it was a yarn over, which means that would go like that. But we're gonna we're gonna double check it. I'm gonna show you how you can fix all of this and determine where you were in the pattern. So the, just do the best you can to start with to pick everything back up. And you know how many stitches that you had when you cast on or how many you should have at you know at any given point okay so I've got everything picked back up I know that some things might not be facing the right way now I know that since the yarns coming off on this side I'm gonna choose to tink this back and I'm gonna take out everything that might be wrong or that might be facing the wrong way so I'm gonna turn this over and I'm gonna tink back knowing 
that everything I'm taking out will be a purl stitch, okay? And if this happens to you and you're not at that point, you could think back until you are at that point, until you know what you need to, excuse me, you know what you need to do. So these first three are gonna be knits because I have a little garter stitch edge. And then everything that's from the lace pattern that I'm tinking out should be a purl, okay? And when I do this, I don't have to worry anymore about the stitch orientation because everything's already going to be facing the right way from the row underneath. So if that's confusing, let me just turn this over and show you. What I've taken out, what I'm taking out here may or may not be stitches that are oriented facing the right correct way, but these that I've taken out are because they were from the row below. So they are facing the correct direction because they were the ones that I purled on the wrong side. The other thing that that helps me with is I now I know that everything is correct that I'm taking out. I can also deal with any weird yarn overs that maybe shouldn't be. And once we get once we get all this taken back, then we can analyze the stitches that are on there and see if we can tell what row we were on in the lace chart or whatever pattern that you happen to be working on. Now let's say for example that we were not on a wrong side row or a right side row when this happened. I can still do this going the other direction. If I'm confused about where I left off, let's say it's a, a project that you've had in hibernation for a while and you just don't even remember where you were in the pattern. And when you pick it up, you get all the you get everything back on the needles, and you then you need to determine what row you were on in the pattern. So the way you could do that is by simply taking everything back out one row, again, knowing that when you do that, you're automatically gonna have everything be facing the right direction. And then you're gonna take this back and you can tell which is a right leaning increase, or sorry, a right leaning decrease or a left leaning decrease, meaning a knit two together or a slip slip knit. And if you really have a complicated pattern, you can write it down as you take it out. So this one, for example, here I'll show you. I just, I know by looking at this next one that that's a knit stitch. So I have my three garter stitches. I know that next is a knit stitch. So if I really wanna know where I'm at in the pattern and I don't remember anything about this, I could just write that down, knowing that I'm writing it down in reverse order from when it's been knitted. So that would have been a knit one. Okay, this would have been another knit stitch. Now when I look at this, that's a third knit stitch, but now here's a yarn over. So that's a yarn over, so I'd wanna write that down, yarn over. And usually a yarn over comes before or after a decrease. Not always, but usually. Now I can tell, because the way the stitches are oriented, I can tell that that would have been a knit two together. So I'm gonna put, put my needle in there. That was a knit two together. And then here's another yarn over. This is another knit two together. Can you see that? If it wasn't, it would be facing the right way. The stitches are open to the left and it's a right leaning increase. I can tell that that's tipped, those loops are tipped to the right. So that was a knit two together. And then there's just a regular knit stitch, okay? And now this one, now that's leaning to the left or the opening of the stitch is to my right. So the loops lean to the left, but the opening is to the right. So that was a slip slip knit. So when I take, the, I'm gonna take that off and it was, has a yarn over in front of it. So I'd be, if I was really confused about where I was, I would be making notes of this. Then I could go back and look at my line of stitches that I had written down and compare it to the pattern to be able to determine what row I was on when the mishap occurred, okay? So I hope that makes sense to you and that helps in analyzing your knitting and learning to read, you know, kind of learning to read what's going on. So if you have a complete disaster where, you know, stitches come out, things go awry, and you find a pile of knitting, you could at least put the needles back on, tink back a row so that you know everything's facing the right way, and then start analyzing what you see.
Okay, and if you if you don't need to take it out to look at that even, so there's a yarn over, and that's a knit two together. That's a yarn over. That's a knit two together. And you you can predict that too because this whole line, this whole line in my lace panel is leaning to the right. So I know that was a knit two together. So I just want you to be able to learn how to kind of read your knitting and analyze that. And then hopefully if something happens and you drop stitches or you know you have a project that's been shuffled around after being in hibernation, you can pick it back up and determine where you were. Okay, so I hope that helps. I hope you don't have to use those techniques too often. But if you do, I hope that gives you a little insight on how to read your knitting and determine where you've been and what, what you need to do next. So if you find this video helpful, as always, I appreciate it if you like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Knit on!